Hello and welcome to a series of tutorials for XFX glass panels. There are a set of plugins for Final Cut Pro 10 that allow the overlay of clean, simple glass panels with images, video and text. You can keep it simple or build sophisticated multi-layer presentations. It's up to you. You'll find the plugins in XFX glass panels in the title browser, top left. But there's also some moves in the effects browser on the bottom right, and we'll look at those in another tutorial. For our example, I've got a picture here of a Ferrari, and over it I've added the bullet background right, and we're working in UHD here, so you get an idea of how these plugins work. What I've done as well, is I've actually modified the text already, and I'm going to show you how to do that in another tutorial, because it's very flexible, a lot of creativity in there. And I'm going to add a few more things, but what I want to do before that is just run through the, the controls in the inspector, because there's quite a lot of them, and they more or less do the same for each plugin. We've got the text, as we mentioned, and then we've got to build in and build out. So if you don't want the thing to slide in, just toggle it off, but we are going to do that. What I tend to do with a lot of these as well, I tend to stack them, so I don't really have the build out on. It doesn't really matter for this because uh, this is just an example, but just to show you, it will actually animate back and at the front as well, should you, should you want it. Panel size. Now, this is quite clever. If I go to where we are in the middle, I can actually say how big I want this. Again, if you hold down the Alt or Option key, it'll actually gear down so you can move it over. And it's correct right the way to the other side. Not too sure you want to go that far, but there you go. And I'll just put it back on the default. The speed ranges from uh, zero, obviously, with the build-in, up to about 50, and those are frames, depending on the frame rate of your timeline. Um, I'm keeping it about 30, but what's important here is all the speeds match across the plugins. So if you bring a bullet point in at 30 and you put it at the same in point as this panel, they'll both come on together as if the you know one's glued on top of the other or they're one item. And that's important to know. And also the acceleration is 100, so that's a nice S curve. You can have a complete linear move should you want to on there by just bringing that down to zero. Now the strip scale, 126%, that is the, the image behind here. So if you can see, I can adjust that. Um, you might not want any mag magnification. You might want a lot of magnification on there. And also the blur, I can change how much blur is on there. I keep that for the defaults for the moment. The next, the edge light angle, as you can see, it's degrees. We keep an eye on this strip here. When I move it, it goes light and dark. Now that's important when we get to a panel that's got more than one edge. But I'll just leave it on where I like. And edge width, fairly self-explanatory. It's the actual width of that edge. So it looks like a panel, like um, a glass panel with a beveled edge. And I can adjust that opacity as well, should I wish. And maybe give it a tint. Maybe not that colour, but you get the idea on there. I mean, it, it, when you're putting a colour in, you can match corporate colours, things like that. And we've got a couple of things down here that helps. Brightness, I can increase the brightness. You might want to get the whole thing to stand out. That's good when you've got black text. And also I can tint it. So I can tint the colour. Let's go, let's say blue on there, should you want. Um, I quite like it as it is. And lastly, on this panel, we've got the drop shadow and that makes the thing pop. You can just see this edge, left hand side. You can adjust it, you can make that darker, uh, push the drop shadow away and also vary the angle. You probably want to vary the angle on the plugins, depending on what they are. Uh, if you've got a box, you might want the drop shadow to go down. If you've got a uh, another one, you might want it to go left or right. And you can control that with the angle of the drop shadow. Let's add a few more things, but on the way up to hit the browser button, we're going to have a look at this panel size that we saw, and that says 625.2. That's important. I'll show you that in a minute. But let's click the browser, and on there, I'm going to get drop zone right and put that on. And it doesn't line up, does it? And that's because the panel size is a different. So on here, if I go to here and we go panel size, 625.5 and hit enter. Now they come in and stop exactly at the same time because the speed is set exactly. But actually, I want it to arrive 
maybe slightly later. So I can I can delay that as much as I like on here. Oh no, maybe we'll keep it. Maybe we'll keep it happening at the same time like that. But I need an image in here. So I need to go to the browser to find my photos. And here you can see we've got an image of the inside of a Ferrari. Click on the drop zone. And we're going to select the Ferrari and hit apply. And we'll get rid of that just the time being. Now that's obviously too big. So what I can do is I can scale that down and I can move it. Be nice to line that up correctly with the graphic. Not too far off position. But as you see here, we've got quite a lot of space down here, which I don't like. I want that space for some bullet points. So what I'm going to do is crop and I can move that up. Now you can see it hits 200 and stops on this slider. No problem. If you hit the uh, Alt key or Option key and drag in the window, you can keep going. And there we go. So that's looking good. One tip here, if you want to move the image within the drop zone, just double click on it and you can see you can easily move that around uh, to position it exactly where you want it and then click outside to go back. OK, we like that. Next up, I want some bullet points, um, but I want them to come on separately, not all at once. I like the picture coming on and the text, but I want a bit more impact with the bullet points. So, yes, you've guessed it. Let's go back to the effects browser. I'm going to add bullet point right on here. And you can just see that that's in black at the moment. So I'm going to put that down there. Let's go into the text face. Let's make that white. Now, if I push it to the front, it's going to go, yeah, yeah, it's not lining up. Again, you need to do the size of the panel. 625.5. And as you can see, it looks like it's glued on. Let's move it over a bit now. Yeah, but I don't want it to come on, as I said, all at once. I want to delay it. So let's have an experiment. Yeah, that's not too bad. Quite like that. Um, OK, let's move it to line up with there, but obviously not the right text. Now, I've cheated a little bit here by cutting and pasting what I want on there. So let me cut that. Paste on there and it's too big. No problem. I'm going to reduce that down. And I also think I'm going to go for light italic on there. That's looking good. Yep, like that. Now, second bullet point. I could drag a bullet point from there and drop it on. That'd be good. But why don't I just do the simple trick of keeping the optional Alt key down and dragging up? And we'll need to experiment about this offset because I want them to kind of all ripple the bullet points to ripple in. And of course, it's in the same position, isn't it? No problem. I'm going to go over to this. Now, this is a bit messy. These are kind of like point to pixels and I like to keep everything on pixels. So the top one, let's call that Y. Let's call that minus 27. And then this other one, let's get an idea of where we're going to go. How far down? Let's call that. OK, let's call that minus 32. So that's minus five between them. And if I hit play, yep, I like that. Yeah, I cool, like that quite a lot, actually. Why don't I, in that case, just work out how many frames are between the two? That's one, two, three, four, five. So I'll pick up this one and go one, two, three, four, five. Now I know there's five difference in the Y axis on here. So minus 32 is going to be minus 37. Hit play. Yep, one more. Go to there, one, two, three, four, five. And we were on minus 30, so that's going to be minus 42. And like things on whole numbers.
And that's a great way of showing bullet points. Obviously, I need to have a quick look at changing the information. So seven speed dual clutch. That's on the second one. Wheelbase. That's on the third one. And lastly, the curb weight, which is the fourth one. And now I've got all those bullet points coming in. Oh, they're going off. Oh, they're going, they're going off at different times. Okay, that's interesting. Why don't I fix that just this year? Hell of it, just to prove that everything works. The panel sizes should be set correctly. There you go. So we've got a staggered in and the whole composition goes out in one. And that's why I don't like motion templates a lot. I like everything to be flexible on the timeline because a lot of stuff I do is timed. It has to match music or voiceover and it has to be bang on. And you can do that when everything is modular, like with this template. Great, like that a lot. You probably noticed that the whole picture comes in on a cut and there's no move on the Ferrari and also the actual composite doesn't come in um, with a move. Now we're going to be tackling that in the next tutorial and I hope to see you then. Bye bye.